A lot of people are chasing stocks. We know that. A lot of people are also chasing stocks at every single level. We know that as well. But again, you know, look, somebody has to buy higher prices. And when people are willing to chase prices at any given price with with little or no regards to their safety, that's called the hot market. That's called the hot environment. Again, we don't know how long it's going to last, but while it does, continue to watch me. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the Access of Trade uh nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. A lot of information to kind of digest. Uh, number one, uh, they finally came to a deal, $900 million stimulus deal. When you look at it and you break it down, it's almost comical that uh, businesses were forced to lock down. Uh, some businesses were never... Uh, going to recover from uh, what happened in this horrific pandemic. And all you get for all your troubles and everything in between is a $600 check. And, and that's kind of uh, the reality that a lot of people uh, in Main Street America um, are, are getting, right? And it's, it's a horrible thing, but that's exactly what happened. And after months and months of anticipation of what the stimulus bill will actually look like, you know, the market's got a big thought. And Ironically, that wasn't you know the news. Okay, uh, if you look at the overnight cash market, the market was actually up. The futures started spiking on this news. There was a, actually uh, kind of a, a, a final resolution to the stimulus bill. The problem was it sucked, right? I think that's a nice way of saying it. And when you started looking at the news, especially overnight, you woke up this morning and you really had some. Uh, very, very ugly news come out of Europe. Uh, rolling lockdowns, uh, potential mutation of this COVID virus. And when you looked at, uh, when you looked at what was going on, uh, you started seeing really aggressive selling uh, in the futures markets. At one point, the Dow went down uh, 600 points. Uh, the Nasdaq was down like 250 or so. So very, very aggressive selling, and that's a, obviously a big no-no. But in the true nature of the market, and this shows you how incredibly strong this market is, uh, not only did the Dow bounce back, uh, but it was led by the financials. And if you saw the news uh, that came out of uh, the banks with the stress tests on Friday afternoon after the close and buybacks, it really is ironic that a group like the banks that, again, if you do trade the banks, you kind of know what I'm about to say. The, 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 the group gets good for like a week and then you don't hear from them for about six months. So the idea that you saw such incredible buy the dip gains today uh, in Bank of America, look at Goldman Sachs today, up 15 points on the day, just a monster, monster move. Uh, JP Morgan did incredibly well as well. You could go through the whole list, but that was the group that led the Dow really higher. And if you look at the themes of the day, again, it's the same theme that's being played out over and over again. Uh, you had the EV battery names, a uh, really, really big move today uh, in NIO. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. Uh, again, we'll talk about the individual pivots. Uh, after the close today, you saw uh, Apple coming out uh, with their own iCar right? Potential iCar, which I think is very, very rude. Having said that, I am on the waiting list for the new Tesla phone that's coming out in 224 as well. Completely unrelated news. But you're starting to see, again, really good uh, groups that are, were strong, continue to be strong. And the speculation flaw in these names of, are, are getting just beyond incredible, okay? If you look what QS did today, just look at this movie. QS had a monster move, 21 points in the regular session. And oh, by the way, hold my beer. The stock went to 110 after the close. Uh, you look at names like VLDR and you can see all that option flow uh, coming in for short term for the 25s. Again, hold my beer. The stock's at 27. The same thing with laser, anything to do with EV, anything to do with batteries, Incred incredibly strong moves. And that's the kind of the definition of what 2020 has been, pl has been played out. Uh, any weakness has been bought, okay? Every level, rising channels have been kind of defended. Uh, the big macro names that everybody's used to kind of 
and looking for leadership, they're still in a weird way on the softer side. But again, as long as speculation money flow continues to flow, as long as people are not afraid to chase higher prices, you're going to continue to get a higher market. Now, again, as we talk about all the time, you can't be, you can't put yourself in a situation and you say to yourself, you know what, 20, 20, uh, 2021 is gonna be exactly the same way. Again, we've been saying this all the time. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. But again, while the market is so strong, while the market is still giving the bulls an incredibly long leash to kind of play out, and as long as the market continues to embrace crazy stocks, crazy SPACs, crazy EV names that we've never we've never heard of up to this year and probably will never hear again after this year, it's an amazing, amazing market right now. And again, you can pick your spots, you can be very, very aggressive at different intervals, but again, always remember cautious, 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 because at any point uh, they could def definitely pull the plug. And again, this is kind of how we played out today. You had uh, Q's gapping down on this rising support. And again, you could see this rising support keeps on getting, right, keeps on getting defended all the time on the rising, what was it, the rising 20-day, uh, right? Rising 20-day bounce, rising 20-day bounce, and they traded right to the rising day, again, to the 20-day moving average and bounced again. Um, so everything looks good. Again, the only names that don't look good are the names that just been out of favor for a very long time, uh, like a Facebooks of the world, like in the video of the world, right? And again, although I don't want to jinx it, so I won't talk about it. But again, the names that have broken out continue to break out the Microsofts of the world, Apple, uh, on that news of a potential iCar uh, traded really, really aggressively today uh, after the close. But again, you're still seeing big uh, speculation money flow on names like NET, right? Names like NET that we covered uh, on the weekend video that broke out today. So again, market is very, very good. The key is not to chase the stocks that already made that crazy aggressive move. The key is to try to find those levels that are coming out of the ranges. Again, like uh, a name like PLTR, right? It's just about to come out of his range. It's had a huge run, went sideways for about a week and a half. Look at this thing, it's ready to go. Uh, NET, right? Again, even though it's breaking out, you can see it had, at least it had a week and a half of digestion and the order flow is coming in on the option side. Uh, NIO, same thing. Again, this is the right group. It finally confirmed this whole channel here. You started seeing the 50 weeklies and you have this big, big push to the 49 and a half. But again, look how much room you have uh, to the upside as well. Now, again, if everything could wake up, if technology could wake up as well, then we would have a really good, aggressive market that everybody could take uh, take advantage of no matter what you trade. But again, we get the market that we have, not the market that we want. Uh, so today was all about kind of game plan. And, you know, when we go, woke up this morning, obviously, the first thing I, I said, any gap down in the market, uh, any gap down in the market uh, from an aggressive levels from the previous week, again, the value is always to the upside. Again, we, we didn't know the Dow was going to go green. We didn't know uh, the, you know the NASDAQ composite was only going to be down 13 points, but that was the game plan. The, the last thing you want to do is short in the hole after a big gap down as market is trying to defend prices on the rising wedge. And again, unfortunately, a lot of new traders got caught today, but again, that is always the value. When the market's strong, you get a gap down, the value is always to the upside. When you get a gap up and the market's weak, the value is always to the downside. It's almost kind of a reverse engineering uh, in that opposite direction of the gap up or gap down. So again, uh, we had a very specific plan today. Uh, we started concentrating on uh, the stay-at-home names, but obviously with any rolling continuation of any type of lockdown, especially in Europe. And you can see here, everything here, for the exception of NET, but everything here had the stay-at-home theme, right? Yeah, stay-at-home theme, stay-at-home, stay even though Netflix never went green, uh, that was the theme, especially ZM. Uh, ZM, I forgot to post uh, on the Twitter feed, guys, so forgive me. Uh, we That was our first trade of the day in the webinar. Uh, off that uh, two, excuse me, off that 420, uh, daily pivoted, you know, big, big spike of around the 427, 428 level. But you can see these trades did very, very well. I uh, hope you guys did incredibly well. Uh, 8420 rejected twice on the daily, uh, was trading above 86 Friday afternoon. And this morning, big spot, especially, especially on this market open. And you can see what happened with NET, just explosion. It's really, really exploded. Uh, it took out the 84, excuse me, it took out the 8420 and traded all the way up to like 8720, really, really big 
move there on NET. Uh, then the, the stay-at-home stock, stock started popping one by one by one. Uh, again, the, the initial move was higher. Then they got stuffed, went lower. But again, the, the market moved these stocks pretty well. Uh, Docu 243 needs to build to wake up. Again, stay-at-home theme. Here was Docu. Uh, D-O-C-U. Here was Docu. It's here. Here's the whole 243 channel here. Uh, traded all the way up to the 249 level on Docu. Uh, you had uh, TDOC. I didn't see TDOC, so forgive me. TDOC rejected twice on the 60 minute 200. I didn't see this one, so I, I apologize. Uh, 200. Okay, yeah, as you can see it, it took out the 200, uh, traded all the way up to 205. Again, really, really good moves uh, on the open on these stay at home names. Uh, Dash 170 rejected twice. Here was Dash, right? Again, all the stay-at-home stocks, right? Here was the 170, uh, traded up to 173 and a half before they got sold off as well. And they started going kind of one by one by one. Uh, Angie only went up like uh, 10 cents or so, uh, not a big move. Uh, BLDP didn't do anything. CLNE actually had a couple of PRs throughout the, the morning. Uh, 575.80 needs to build. Here was CLNE, right? Here was the 570, actually went all the way to 620. Uh, nice move there on alternative energy. This little one I kind of still like. Uh, ears 290 needs to build uh, for the small cap players. Here is Ears, uh, took out the 290, went as high as the 317. Uh, first close over $3. I still think this thing has more room to go. Really nice looking uh, chart there as well on Ears. Uh, JMII, not the biggest move in the world at first. Uh, but JMAI, you know, 4380, 44 continuation for Friday's move went to like 44 and a half. Not a big move there as well. Uh, but again, nice pop there. Take on the way up. Uh, Riot again, big move on Riot. A couple of PRs as well. Uh, Riot rejected 1060 back to back days. Needs to build. They were coming for the January 15 call buyers. Step in. Here was Riot. Right, you can see here, right here's the 1060, traded all the way up to 1132. I uh, had some more news after the close. It's actually uh, trading in, 11, in uh, 1160s. Uh, here was the big one, uh, and I still like this thing. NIO needs to build, uh, rejected 48. They were coming for the January 50s, and then they were coming for the weekly 50s. So 48 uh, needs to build. Here was NIO. I still like a lot of the potential here. This is actually the first close. It took out the 48, took out the 4860s, traded as high as 49 and a half. I think if 50 starts building, you could get a move back to 55, especially, uh, especially with the theme continues to be uh, really, really good here. So you can see a lot of busy, a lot of activity today, a lot of good stuff. Uh, you can see the next supply, it actually went to 4960, and I believe that was it. So, I mean, th again, the market continues, uh, the market continues to pay off uh, the speculation buyers. And look, a lot of people are chasing stocks. We know that. A lot of people are also chasing stocks at every single level. We know that as well. But again, you know, look, somebody has to buy higher prices. And when people are willing to chase prices at any given price with with little or no regards to their safety, that's called the hot market. That's called the hot environment. Again, we don't know how long it's going to last, but while it does, continue to watch these channels off the bottom, off the middle. Don't chase the higher price names. Always look for value. And again, try to do this over and over again until the buyers clearly show that they are tired. Guys, God bless everybody. Have a great night, and I'll see you all tomorrow.